right, guys, welcome to another episode of Tank Chats. I believe this is episode 22 of Tank Chats. So today, yes, we're looking at another Sherman, but uh, I want to take a look at this one specifically because it's kind of a, uh, a variant that we have seen, just uh, a little bit more of your standard Sherman, but also with some late war modifications. So um, we're going to hop in and take a look. All right, so you guys already know the history of the Sherman. I don't got to go too much into it. But basically what we're looking at here, this is an example of an M4A1. This one would be rolling off your assembly line in 1942, one of the first Shermans coming off the assembly line. Um, they were given out to lend so they were given to the British, the French, uh, the Germans would capture them and use them, the Russians were given them, pretty much any of our allies during World War II were given these, and um, yeah, so big, big history of the Sherman, everybody kind of already knows the story of it. Um, so with the uh, Sherman being produced in 1942, it's all action starting in 1942, actually the first ones were like in Kasserine Pass, in the deserts in North Africa and all that when these Shermans were the first saw combat under the British and then U.S. forces. Uh, after that, you got 1943, you got Italy, and then you got Shermans sent over to the Pacific. So any battle in the Pacific, like as early as Guadalcanal, they could have been used. Um, so lot, lots of history with the Sherman here. Um, you got 1944, of course, the big one that comes to mind is the Normandy invasion. So, of course, you got the Allied landing to D-Day. In 1945, these were just leading the charge kind of into the Rhineland. Uh, towards into Germany, capturing and neutralizing cities uh, at will, pretty much. Um, so, the Sherman was good for when it came out. Uh, the crews liked it at first, it was decent. Um, it also gained the reputation of being known as the Tommy Cooker or um, the Death Trap, actually. Um, this specific variant we're looking at here is M41, so this would be an early version. So, the reason why I can tell it's an early version is because we've got the cast iron foam. Um, so, what would happen was, uh, this one is modified, like I said, but what would happen was, is this would only have one uh, door system that would have basically one commander's hatch that would have a split door system. So one hatch for three guys to get out of the turret, then you got the two hatches here for the uh, driver and the co-driver to get out. So you got five guys trying to bail out of three hatches, not exactly the best ratio there, um, which is why they became known as death traps of Tommy Cookers, because also because the ammo would get hit and would light these things and you've seen footage of them getting caught on fire all the time and uh, uh, you've all seen that uh, historical stock footage. So after the uh, after World War II they saw action into Korea uh, they weren't uh, used this variant really this variant was retired they were more using the M4A3 E8s and uh, like some of the versions of the flamethrower Sherman and stuff like that were still being used in Korea. Um, this was exported and there are actually variants of this that were given to the Israelis and the French that became known as Super Sherman. It was an M4A1 Hall with an EZ8 suspension, had a 105 millimeter gun and a very modified turret. It basically had the turret of what uh, an M4A176 would have, but uh, it was modified with a 105 millimeter gun. Those were used all the way up into the 60s and the 70s. The Sherman was eventually phased out in the 70s by pretty much everybody. There might be some third world countries still use them or have them in inventory, but uh, they are no longer really technically a in-service vehicle. So, that does it for the history. With that, we're going to hop into the tour. Alright, so hopping right into the tour of the vehicle. Uh, the first thing that we can see is this is a General Motors stamp vehicle. So this is a General Motors produced vehicle. Has the serial number here. Uh, this uh, the end numbers are 984. If you want to call it, get a shot of that. Right there. 984. Uh, anyone wants to look up the serial number or I can look it up. I do believe that this Sherman was used in World War II. Um, so you got your driver, co-driver position right here in your front hull. It's that definitive cast iron ball shape. This would have been your early war Sherman. So it was actually made for those like mix of iron and steel um, was about two inches thick so the Sherman had 51 millimeters of armor uh, at least for the hull so about two inches down here is access to the power pack and transmission you got your bolts to access that basically to cut this out pull it out you can look at the engine the transmission all that you got your bow gunners position here so your co-driver radio operator slash bow gunner you have a 30 caliber machine gun here you got your bush guards right here and these would actually be your headlights right here but they're missing on this vehicle so these would be your bush guards for the headlights and these are extra bush guards here basically just hey protect against the exact what they sound basically protect against brush and stuff and they're going cutting through trees and all that fun stuff um 
we're gonna talk about this a little more on the side, but they do have, so these tracks have the, uh, the end spacers and end connectors known as duck bills that basically extend the track to make it um, go across mud better. So this is one of the first uh, modifications that we're gonna see that makes this a late war M4A1. So got that signifier feature right here. You got your front periscope, you got your co-driver's periscope, your driver's periscope. You got a ventilation slit right here, iron bolt lifting plugs, front fenders. And as you can see, this one does have the modification for having a side skirt. However, this particular model does not have the side skirts attached to it. Down here, you got some towing lugs too. Like I said, this would have been access to your pack of power pack transmission. You got the uh, typical US star right here. That from this, we're gonna hop up into the turret. All right guys, hopping right up into the turret. Now this is where we see another late war modification right here. Right here we have a loader's hatch. So this is actually your loader's hatch. Uh, the loader would've been in here. And um, like I said, so Sherman has a crew of five. You have your commander, loader, gunner would sit right in front of him, then uh, driver and co-driver down there. Now, like I said, talking about late war, the loader's hatch was added, so they basically cut a hole out, unwelded this part of the turret, put the loader's hatch in there, so they had two hatches basically for three guys to get out of the turret. And then they have this improved cupola right here that you see more similarly on the Easy 8 and the Chaffees and the later, war, uh, later World War II tanks. This is basically to give the commander better vision, so he has his direct vision slits here. He'd have a periscope as well, and this was spring-loaded, so it could open up just like this one. This one is spring-mounted as well, you see that right here. These are basically just spring open. So a little bit better odds for three guys to get out of the turret. Uh, right here where I'm standing on top of, that is a ventilation port right there. This right here is your rest for your 50 caliber barrel. The mount would have been right back here so they could have mounted the 50 cal onto the back. Either right here would be your combo antenna. So this would be your, where your communications come through. Back here is a spot actually for a spare barrel for the 50 cal. And you could even modify this with another machine gun on here, which I think is what they were doing with this one here with extra antennas or extra machine guns. Now, the gunner would have sat right here. He didn't have his own hatch, but the gunner has his periscope right here. You see the gunner's periscope right here. This is where the gunner would have sat. Now we're gonna take a look when we get down to the side as well, but I'll talk about it up here. You see this turret has a bit of modification. Again, another thing that was late war, is that they added applique armor. So basically they welded uh, basically any kind of uh, steel and stuff that they could to give the gunner better protection, and also because there's ammunition storage. So basically that gave it an extra two inches of thickness basically giving the turret an effective thickness of up to uh, about three to four inches of uh, steel on the turret. So up here, we got the M3 75 millimeter gun. So this will be the original gun that the Sherman would have. It has a 75. This one is not like the 76 models that we've looked at before. Uh, you got an bolt lifting plug on the front here. And then your turret mantlet right here. This is also a later war modification. So the mantlet was a bit thicker. Uh, originally, the M4A1s would have basically a thinner mantlet that would basically just be a front pivot mount for the M3, M3 uh, 75 millimeter gun, and the 30 caliber would just be sticking straight out. You could see it from the side of the turret, and you could also see the gunner sight. This, however, will basically give this a little about an extra inch of armor and cover that area up. So the machine gun will be hidden in there, and the gunner sight will be hidden in there. So your extra 30 caliber will be in there, and your gunner sight would be right here where I mentioned the gunner was before. So that pretty much does it for the turret, you guys. Kind of cool seeing this example of a early war Sherman mixed with late war. So we're going to hop down to the side. All right, hopping into the side of the vehicle, you guys. All right, so we talked about up on the turret as well, but we're going to look at it right here. So come up here, get shots of the applique armor. So this basically was designed to protect the ammunition. This gives it an extra inch or two inches of steel just to kind of protect the side, making the side about up to two to three inches thick. So basically it was just this pallet here to protect ammo. Obviously, Against later German weapons, it wouldn't be very effective, but against smaller, low caliber guns, it could be a little bit more effective. Got the classic US service star here, and we can look at the thickness actually right here using my hand of how thick they would mount, they would weld uh, steel onto the turret to protect the gunner and uh, his, and his uh, commander on the inside and the ammunition. So you can see there, just like my finger, in thickness to compare it. It's just how thick they would uh, weld steel onto the turret. Now, down here, you got the vertical volute spring suspension. Basically, uh, the predecessor to the EZ-8 suspension, this is your standard M4 Sherman uh, suspension. And uh, so we're looking at the, um, the doctrine when we have, we're not at the main battle tank doctrine yet, so 
The drive sprocket is here in the front. You have the drive sprocket here, and the support wheel is in the back. You see the roller wheel is in the back here. You have the little support wheels up here inside the suspension. And you can see the welding and the casting of the bolts here down in the lower part of the hull. Now, another thing that would modify this to make it a later war M4A1 is it, I'm not gonna make the cameraman do this, but underneath they would have an escape hatch. So if the crew needed to bail out, if their hatches got stuck or the turret got stuck on top of them, they could bail out through the bottom. So, um, that pretty much does it for the side. You just got a couple more, got a couple more iron bolt lifting plugs here. You got this little, basically a uh, turret, uh, the, the hole area where the turret would be and these are model this like i said this would be for a side skirt you could put side skirts it would come down to about right here and uh as you can see with the applique armor they had to modify it where they uh kind of extended it out a little bit and welded it onto you can see the weld bolt right here you can take a look at the weld mark i'm gonna show that you can see all the weld marks where they welded this onto the thicker armor but they would still basically have the uh connectors so it's kind of the it depended on how on the tightness of it. So what would happen was, so we see here, they had, all these were cast welded. Like I said, this is cast welded. But what would happen was, is they would basically adjust as necessary. So you see the holes. So you see one missing right here. So the whole, so they would weld one on. They basically adjust it and into position where they want it when they put the side skirts on, which is why you see a little bit different position between these two with the applique armor. So that does it for the side, you guys. We're gonna hop into the back. All right, so hopping into the back, you got the back of the engine deck right here. So you got the top of the engine deck. These will be your access doors to the engine. The engine was a R975 Continental Radial uh, engine. It was a C1 to C4 variant. Um, it would give this thing uh, about horsepower of 350 to 400 horsepower, and it would power this baby up to about 30 miles an hour. Um, later Shermans were a little bit faster, but like I said, this is your early war meets late war Sherman. So uh, about 30 miles an hour was about the fastest you could get a Sherman up to, at least of this variant, you'd get about up to 30 miles an hour. And um, access to your engine would have been down here. You can see the engine panel doors right here. You have towing lugs, uh, mount for a towing pintle. You have the actually the ventilation here for the engine. You can see this is like, this is another thing that's a later war modification, is you have this part right here. Uh, on later Shermans, this would actually be folded up and hanging out so they could ventilate the engine. Right here is a stowage bustle. This would fold down and you could put jerry cans, sandbags, extra equipment, extra rations, any kind of equipment and stuff that you would want on there. Um, so that's what this would be used for. Now, I believe with these later Shermans, this one doesn't have a mount for it, but this one would have a talk box, I think, on the later on the later Shermans. So uh, this is where it would be. It would either be on one of these sides right here. It would have a talk box. You have your rear fender lights right here with their bush guards. This would have been your blackout markers right here and then your service drive. Uh, reverse lights basically so these are going to be red lights and your green light kind of like Christmas um, <laughs> but uh, if we look again at the tracks you see that they have those duck bills so basically if you were to picture the track like this that's how the tracks would be originally you take that off that's what it'll be like when it was uh, added with the spacers and eye connectors up there you got the back of the engine deck and you just kind of got the back of the turret. We talked about the other uh, stuff and mounts that they have on the back of that earlier. So, with that, we're going to hop into the close out of this video, you guys. All right, guys, thank you again for tuning in to the Night Chest. This is episode 22. Please have a look at the m 4 a on the Sherman. Uh, like more modification. I know I'm not technically historically accurate with the uniform. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Peace.